enjoy it while it lasts. And there was another thing which maybe might be worth noting. It popped up somewhere. One of the Five Nations or Six Nations games, a couple of rugby players having a beer after the match. Imagine the Roscommon players having out for a few pints. You would have advised writing on Twitter and everything, Roscommon, drink on the drink, disgrace, blah, blah, blah. Like, lads should be allowed to go out on a Sunday night and have a few beers with a match the following Sunday. One week away, for fuck's sake. Like. And I think that's a big part of the game that has gone now. And I think we've got, why, we've why got do you, poor professionals. Why, <coughs> sorry, Steve, just caught across here. Why, why do you think that, that has always been the kind of tradition in GA as in like oh lads there's Mental. obviously a balance to it there's obviously a balance to it but like why has it always been the case in in, in, in GA that basically if you don't the, if you have a few points after the game and the game the next week you're, you're, you're the devil you're the devil in disguise like what crazy, what? crazy. well I'll tell you what I look back on in fondness on, on the couple of years I had with the Carlo lads like and I knew I knew where they were coming from base wise I knew that they didn't have much success for 10 years and in 2018, when we got promoted, we had one of the best nights of our lives after the, the night we got promoted. The bus journey back from Belfast to Carlo was something else. It was ridiculous. Like, it was actually, it was, it was, it was mental. I don't know how me and the wife ended up on the bus, but we drove past Newry and didn't get off and ended up going straight to Carlo. So it was great crack. But, but we, we, we had a brilliant night. But I'll tell you a good one, and Here's one for you. There was a lad in Carlo made his own beer, and it was called 56 South, right? So we yeah. played Louth in the Leinster Championship in Portlaoise. And we beat them by 11 points, which is unheard of for Carlo, unheard of. One by 11 points, and he, he came in to me and he says, is there any chance I can take a few cases of beer into the chase rooms to the boys? I said to Turlick, what do you think? And Turlick was, oh, Jesus, the Leinster Council. I said, fuck the Leinster Council. Get the fucking beer into the boys and enjoy it. And we walked in the corner with a couple of crates of beer, went into the chase rooms, and I still have a great photo, actually. I have it on my phone saved. Like, great photo of us all just sitting in the chase rooms, chilling out, beer in the hand, you know, having a fucking great time life was good sun was shining we went out two weeks later and battered Kildare off the field like so it didn't impact the lads do you know what I mean like you know the lads and they'll remember those moments they'll remember those days you know whereas like I think the game now and has got a very sterile it's actually got to the st- it's actually got to the stage now where some teams aren't even aren't even celebrating winning a, a championship or a provincial title that's, that's what it's got to they're not even celebrating you know they're just like hold the cup up set it down move on you know why like You've got to celebrate success. You've got to celebrate your wins. You've got to celebrate your victories, you know, because they, they don't come around every day of the week. And that's a big thing, like, you know. No, it's, yeah, I, yeah. Look, and the team bonding as well. See, that, that can't be underestimated yeah. how important that is with teams. Like, yeah. it's, you're, you're yeah. training, like, obviously, uh, with the divided season here now, it's, it's it got, it got a bit better. But, like, you know, 10 years ago when I was playing, like, you're going, you're going 10 months of the year. So if you're going large chunks, yeah. like, you need, you need two or three separate definitely pre-championship there's always a weekend away there somewhere or yeah. they can't be get out yeah. Or, yeah. because you know it's it's a very serious environment but it's nice too to to kind of you know get to know the lads in a social outing yeah and just you know, shoot the breeze without fucking someone trying to take the head off and then we went up we went up to the john we went up to the johnson house that year 2018 we went up to the johnson house that year in the middle of january right for two nights and we did a training camp, and we did it. You know, we, we were we were pretty professional about it. We we had a couple of training sessions on Saturday, and then by by chance, by chance uh, Antrim Antrim were staying there as well on the Saturday. So we we decided we'd play them in a bit of a challenge match. So uh, Gerard Gerard Adams was actually over Antrim at the time, but the game got a bit feisty, and it ended in a in a, in a it ended in a thirty man melee, and Antrim actually walked off the field. So. <laughs> I was saying to Turlock, like, I'm sort of worried about tonight. We're down for dinner and <laughs> we're mixing in the game as a melee. I walked into the bar that night about half 11 and both squads were in the bar singing Celtic Symphony. Chris Kerr was leading the charge for, for Antrim. Craig Carney from, from uh, Carla was leading the charge. And the boys had a fantastic night. And we got up the next morning for breakfast. We're all in for breakfast. A few beers. Myself and Greg sat at the bar and a few beers as well. And we got up for breakfast the next morning. Lads were mixing as well the next morning. Then we went and did our training session at 11 o'clock on the Sunday and had our lunch and went down the road. But like that was that was a huge part of our cohesion and building our togetherness that year, you know, and and, and building a bit of spirit. Like, you know, and you, you look back and fond on fond memories in those nights. You sort of remember those nights more than you remember the, the you know, the, the the slogging and the training, you know. How how do you find getting on that topic scene? How do you find the weekends away? How like eh, 
it's such a confined, as in like you're trying to get a lot in in the two days, maybe. What way did you kind of work with Carlo and in your experience? Was our structure? I always felt we had a good structure. We would have done a session. We, I always felt we had a good structure. We did a session early on the Saturday just for talk's sake, right? So you down maybe on the Friday evening. You, Friday evening, okay. Say you're right, just for toxic. Say you're on the Friday evening, bit of bit of bit of video work, team meeting, bit of briefing. Here's what we're doing. Uh, you know, off the off the bed early enough, maybe dinner or whatever, off the bed or whatever. Our, our free time, no no booze at all on the Friday. Saturday, we want to get up. Want to do a training session about eleven o'clock on the Saturday, uh, and uh, we want to give them a bit of free time. Uh, boys, when we want to get a bit of a snack, bit of a late lunch, we would have back out at three o'clock and done maybe like a tactical session or something along those lines. But I went into the gym, lads might have done a small gym session, into the pool for recovery, free time from five to seven, no drink again, dinner together, bit of video after dinner. And then I always done a quiz and the, and the quiz was wild popular among the lads because we would have had three, three rounds of, say, general knowledge sport, but then we would have had a player led round. So we would have got a wee bit of background info off by a few old secrets a few uh, maybe skeletons in the closet that we would ask a few questions on, you know, and got a bit of crack going as well. So what player in the camp did this happen to on his holidays, etc. You know, and it was a bit of banter, but it was some, it was some crack. And then that evening, say maybe half nine, ten o'clock, we just would have said to the boys, and to be fair, they'd have been hugely respectful. Twelve o'clock's the cut off, lads. So for two and a half hours, two hours, the boys would have four or five pints. Some of the players wouldn't have drank at all. Some of them would have had a latte or a coffee. A few of the lads would have had a few beers. Nobody would have left the premises. Then up the next morning, breakfast together and uh, maybe a bit of briefing, small meeting. And then we would have trained about 11 o'clock on the Sunday for a couple of hours, had our dinner and down the road then Sunday afternoon. And and the value in those camps, and that's the thing, Andy, like people don't realise, we were big borrowing and stealing to get away in those camps. right? And like I mean, we had to maximise our resources. And then you have the likes of Dublin, for example, that will go away for five days to the Carton House. Like, like what advantage is that like? It's just it's monumental advantage, like monumental, like you know. But there were there were uh, those camps for me when they're done right, and uh, you can get the balance between between work and play. You know, if you get the balance right, because it can't be all work, work, work. You know, 